Hi, Paul Thompson here with three quick tips on how to make your low strings uh, really kind of pop out of the mix, really get the most value from those sounds. Now I'm going to demonstrate uh, with two different sounds, Abbey Road 1 legendary low strings and also with the symphonic series, the cellos and basses, and I'll show you that in a second. But first up, legendary low strings. Right, now they sound like this just out of the box. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get um, a kind of slightly intensified sound. If you imagine the kind of loudness control that you used to push on your stereo, if you're of a certain age like me, this is kind of like that. It's a little bit of a smiley face, but I've put a little bump in the middle as well to help bring out the kind of rosin and the kind of throatiness of the cellos. So I'm going to switch it in and out, first of all, just on a single note so you can hear the effect. And now let's play a quick phrase with and without. Let's have a quick look at each band and I'll show you what's going on. So at the bottom here, we've got a bit of a boost, uh, 83, but it's a shelf. So it's, this is the bottom end of our smiley face, if you like. It's just bringing all of the low end frequencies up. Um, we haven't got anything going on here, but we've got a little boost here at 200 hertz. Now, um, if I switch that on and off, you'll be able to hear what's going on there. So it's not it's not doing a kind of low rumbly thing, but it is doing a, low, a kind of slightly pointed um, element of the low sound. We've got um, a tiny, tiny cut here at uh, 500 hertz, roughly. I'm going to show you why I've cut that. So I'll just dial this right up to the top. It's that kind of it's that sound. I just I just always tend to pull a little bit of that out of the strings because um, it just doesn't sound very nice to me. It sounds a bit kind of honky. Um, we've got a great sound here. This is the singing sound. This is what I call the kind of throat sound of the cellos. And I'll show you just to exaggerate what this is. Two K. It's kind of that. It's that human voice uh, kind of territory that you're in there, um, and I really like that. Then this is my final thing. It's again, it's a shelf, and it's the top end of our smiley face. It's the uh, the high boost, but I've got it coming in quite low at three K. I'll show you the effect of that. So the reason I've got this coming in quite low here on the low strings. Um, rather than up, say, 8K or 10K, um, is just that I want it to capture that, that kind of extra bit of rosin and that extra bit of grit so that the sound that we get... just really pushes forward the intensity. So that's the first one. And I'm going to pop that uh, EQ preset in a link below so you can have a play around with it and experiment and find the sound that you like. Now... What if we want to add the kind of beef, the bottom end? Well, there's two different ways of doing that. So tip number two is a plugin called Low Air from Waves. Now, there are a couple of different types of this kind of thing. It's a subharmonic synthesizer. And what it does is it takes everything up to a certain frequency range-ish in, in, the, in the signal you put into it, and then it duplicates that down below. I'm going to show you what that does. Let's turn the our EQ off and I'll kick the low air in and out. Okay, now you can hear that really, really clearly there. There is going to be a point at which when you go down to the very bottom of the bases, um, you're losing a certain amount of this signal because it's going on below the signal that you can reproduce through your speakers. That's not going to be a problem when you have a really, really big system, but uh, you might kind of fail to hear some of that stuff on your headphones or on a smaller speaker system. So I would just 
err on the side of caution if you're putting this on your final mix. Just be a tiny bit careful and maybe have a little look at Spectrum Analyzer to make sure you're not totally blowing out the bottom end um, in a really massive way. But I'm going to show you what this is actually adding by taking the direct signal here out altogether. Now, I hope you could hear that on YouTube through the compression algorithm. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, that, it's a subharmonic synthesizer. Now, there is another way to do this. And uh, so this is tip number three. And I'm going to show you this. Uh, let's turn that one off. I'm going to show you this uh, with the sub bass sine wave. Now, this is just a very straightforward program. It's a sampler um, as it comes up. Um, I haven't done anything apart from just change the amplitude a tiny bit so that it doesn't have a very hard start and end. Now I'm going to add that in uh, and out. So this is without it. And with. Now the one thing you will have to do if you're using a legato patch is to just go in and tweak the note ends of this and maybe pull them a tiny bit ahead so there's a tiny bit of separation in between each note um, so that you don't get a kind of rubbing sound. Um, obviously with the legato sounds you have to overlap the notes but with this sound you want a tiny gap between them so that the decay that we've set here which is pretty short it's just uh, the release sorry it's about 260 milliseconds so a quarter of a second um, you just need to give that time to be going out as your next note is starting. So you'll fiddle around and find the right level for you and, and all that kind of stuff. But I'll show you what this is doing just on its own. We take the strings out of record. Now, um, one final little trick with this one is to pitch it down by an octave. Now, I have to warn you, um, if you play at the bottom end of the basses now, it all hell breaks loose. So this is really for when you're playing slightly higher um, because you want that sound of the basses and the cellos playing higher. This is in octaves, um, which I've talked about many times before. Um, but also you want this to sit below that. And it sounds really, really great. Check this out. But if we go down... then we're below the level that we can satisfactorily reproduce. All kinds of horrible stuff might be going on down there that you don't know about. Be very careful. Only use that trick uh, when you are playing relatively high in the basses range. Um, otherwise, just keep it at pitch, and, that, and that's a great sound there. Now, the purists among you will be howling at the screen by this point, saying, oh my god, he's left the LFO connected to the mod wheel. Yes, I have. Let me show you what the difference is with and without this. Now, unless you play really up here, you, it's not really giving a massive pitch difference down there. But what it is doing is it's giving you a kind of something else that is controllable by the mod wheel that is introducing a kind of, um, oh, I don't know how to describe it, raucousness, a kind of fatness to the sound. If you don't like it, you can always turn it off really simply there or just reduce the amount slightly so that it's not um, doing it quite as much. But I do kind of like it, having used it with and without. So that's all, all I would note. So I promised that I would just quickly flick through these three techniques uh, with an alternative source. And the source that I'm going to use is the uh, Symphonics. So here we go. So as you can see, I've got the cellos and the basses, the performance legatos up. I've put the basses down, uh, transposed them down an octave. So I've got that separation of the octave in there. And that sounds like this. Adding the channel EQ, first of all. adds that kind of lovely uh, texture, that kind of richness and, and pushes the sound forwards in the mix. Let's pop low air on both of those signals.
fantastic sound there. And finally, let's add in our sine wave. Now, if we solo that, you will hear that here, um, this is something that's quite important. You've got to keep track of your octaves. Now, because we're playing an octave higher on the keyboard, in this instance, we do need to put the sine wave down an octave. So it's very important that you that you note where you're playing on the keyboard. Are you playing um, at the level where the basses play, down the bottom there, or have you got the basses transposed down? If you've got the basses transposed down, then you need to transpose down your sine wave as well. Check this out. And just for fun, because it's a really, really silly thing to do, let's turn everything on. So three quick tips there for how to make your low strings really pop, either using the EQ to give a bit of a smiley face, but with that bump in the middle to push them forward in the mix and make them just a little bit more intense, to use low air to add your subharmonic synthesis to the part, or to use that sine wave in sampler to add a sub bass like an organ pedal, an octave below everything that's going on. I hope that was useful. See you on the next one. Bye bye.